just wanted to step in here uh, near the end of the video, I got a great, important question for you guys. Uh, please give me your feedback, and it's going to help us with this beautiful uh, which, uh, bourbon that we're making. All right, so please make sure you watch to the end. I think it's right after step 15 or something like that. Uh, what are we going to get into today? Well, this is the second half of our smoky corn bourbon uh today is distilling day it's the best part of this whole hobby it's, it's a lot of fun i love to, to run the still anyway so what we're going to do what we did in the first half is we made our mash and then this this half we are going to show how to how i run my still uh everybody's always a little bit different but anyway uh so we left off with number seven, I do believe, and that's when we pitched our yeast. So we'll start up there, and this will be steps eight through 16, okay? So, but first, welcome to Still Works and Brewing. My name is Randy, and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. All right, let's get going. Okay, step number eight is fermentation. Um, I use a fermentation room. A lot of people use a, a corner of their basement. There's <coughs> many ways. Uh, now my fermentation room, I got the temperature set at 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And it usually takes, I'm gonna say seven to 10 days. Uh, this one actually finished up a little early. I think it was six days, it was done. All right. But how do you know when it's done? Well. Remember when we talked about the uh, hydrometer reading for the SG and how it is so important? Okay, we'll get into that. All right, so how I know it's done, I throw the hydrometer in there and it read 1.000. So I know fermentation is complete. All right, so the next question you might have is how much ABV is in that six gallon bucket. Well, that's that's where the uh, starting gravity really comes in handy. Okay, it's an easy formula. It is the starting gravity minus the final gravity times 131.25 and that equals your ABV. Very simple. In this case, we started at 1.084 minus 1000 so that equals 0.084 times 131.25, and they come out to 11%. Okay, that's cool, I like that. All right, the next thing, I have a six gallon mash, so 11% of that six gallons, if you do the math, it comes out to 0.66 gallons of pure alcohol. That, I'm talking pure, nothing. Okay, we can't achieve pure alcohol with our still. All right, so just remember that the distillate is coming off at let's say 70 ABV or 140 proof. Uh, that means it, it's 70 parts alcohol and 30 parts of water, see? So, like I said, we'll never get that, uh, how much was that, uh, I forget little over half a gallon of pure alcohol, we won't get that, okay? So that is fermentation in a nutshell. All right, let's get ready to move to step nine. Okay, step nine. Uh, I call it charging the still. Okay, I use a, they call it an auto siphon just because it's really easy to use or you could siphon it any way you see fit. I like to uh, siphon a good clean mash off the top and I like to leave all the junk behind. Uh, that's just the way I like to do it. Okay, so let's let this uh, let that siphon up. So we got all the mash siphoned over into our still pot. Uh, now there's a lot of gases still in that liquid so to help get them gases out is I use a uh, it's for mixing wine. You just put it in a cordless still, run in there a little bit, 
and uh, it don't take very long to get rid of those gases. Just takes a couple, few seconds. We just want to knock them gases loose. And that's about all I gotta do. Okay. Step number 10. Step number 10 is stacking the still out. All right, so we're gonna put our cone on there. And, it, and it's, like I said, one, one still versus another, they all might be a little bit different, but it's all basically the same thing. I'm using a column still. Uh, the connections you make, you want them tight, but you don't want them, don't put your pliers, just use your fingers. Okay, the next part is I am using, I like to put copper in the bottom of my uh, first piece of my column. And it's easy, you just roll it up. Oh, it's about 18 inches long or so. And I just put it in the bottom. I put two rolls. Now, depending on what you're making, you can use either rashing rings or whatever else you want to pack the column with. But this, in this case, I'm just using uh, two rolls of copper and that's it. Okay. Now, Let's start stacking it out, all right? Now, one big test is, if you can breathe through there nice and easy, then you're okay. All right, so we'll put our first piece on. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, I like to use a sight glass. It helps me see what goes on. You can see how much passive reflux I'm getting or uh, sometimes I'll put it down near the bottom. So if I wanna keep an eye on if it's getting ready to puke, I just like sight glass. And I've talked to a lot of people and a lot of people do like it. Okay, so there's that. Move on up. Okay, the next piece is just a piece straight. All right, the next is going to be my lead big condenser. Put a gasket. This one's always a tricky one to put on because you get, you almost need three hands. Let's, we can manage. And then the last piece. And the last piece will be thermometer. All right. All right, so that is, the still is stacked out. Put that okay. okay, step 11. Step 11 is the still connections. Uh, basically all I got is, I got electric for the heating element, which I'll plug into my SWR box. Now, pulse width modifier. So my controller for my electric, electric element in the bottom of the still pot. Now the way I heat my still up, I use a combination of both and we'll get into that. Um, so, you got the electrical connection and then I got two water connections. Uh, cold water into the bottom of the Liebig and the water comes out of the Liebig, all right? So let me get those made. 
And then this step would be done. Okay, step 12, heating the still. Okay, so what I do is I like to heat the still up. To get it started, I like to go slow, all right? So what I'll do is I'll be putting, well, it would help if I plugged it up, but it wouldn't. All right, so I'm only gonna put a few amps into the uh, heating element. And why is that? I mean, should I go full blast? Well, what I like to do is start slow. So if there is any solids that are in the uh, mash that I mistakenly got in there, once you get the fluid, once it starts heating up, it's gonna start moving all around. And then you have less chance of um, scorching. And that is my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's still pot temperature. It's about 176. I'm starting to get a couple drips off my condenser. If you start feeling your column, you'll feel the heat start coming up. So here really, really soon, I'm going to cut the, the, uh, the propane off and go strictly with the electric. So, and it's, it's gonna happen real soon because I'm just getting a couple drips and it's, it's a very pungent smell, so that's like the uh, four shots are coming off. Okay, so it's, it's getting ready to happen real soon. And, and it does happen pretty quick. So like I said a million times, now's not the time to go uh, get a cup of coffee or anything. Okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm collecting off my Four shots and heads, I, I like to consider them coming off at the same time. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's a nice broken stream. Uh, so I like either a broken stream or very little pencil lead. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, what I consider four shots and heads are, if it's like a grain match like this one is, I'm gonna collect off about one ounce per gallon. So that gives me about six ounces and I'll be happy with it. But you're always gonna keep a smell on it. You'll be able to tell, you know, cause right now it's really good and pungent, all right? Now, if I got a fruit mash, uh, it's usually about one and a half ounces per gallon. And uh, that's just my rule of thumb. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Uh, the smell is starting to go away. I'm going to collect a couple, probably another couple ounces. And then uh, we'll go from there, okay? Just to let you know where I'm at, uh, so far I've, what I've collected is one, two, about three quarts almost. This first jar here, it's, it's off the charts for this. So it's, it's above uh, 80%, so it's off the charts. Now this one here, It is 70%, uh, 140 proof fair. And coming off the spout right now, that's, and that's what I like to do. I like to collect, or test right off the spout. So right off the spout is right now is 60%, which is 120 proof. So, it's coming off pretty good, and, and with how much alcohol I should have, I, will, I think I'm gonna see that uh, percent drop pretty fast soon. So I'm gonna kinda keep an eye on it, but I think I'll get at least another jar or so off. Okay, well, I think I'm about at the end of this run. Uh, I probably could uh, just turn it up a little bit, collect some tails off, but I got three and a half jars of really clean stuff. And it was awful funny that that jar there, it was, I mean, that's 120. It started off at 50 and she, it just started dropping like a brick. And it just ain't as clear as these other jars. 
I mean, it's not bad. But it's just not as crystal clear. It just don't look, look the same. So I'm going to call it this run done. I'm going to let that run for a little while. I'll keep that as tails. And uh, tails are good for uh, putting in your next run. And then you can, I mean, there's good alcohol in there. Why not use it? Okay. All right, so what's next? All right, so what I'm going to do now is I will take pieces of paper towel, put, over, put a ring on it, just so nothing gets in it. And I'm going to let them jars air out till tomorrow. And then we'll move on to the next step. And uh, we'll finish this run up, okay? All right, so I will see you tomorrow. So it's the next day. All right, so we are going to do step 14. Step 14 is proofing and blending. Okay, so if you can see in front of us, here's what we collected, right? I mean, these four jars here are crystal clear, but that jar there, you can see a little haze to it. So I am going to consider that as tails. I'm not going to use that one, okay? All right, so what we want to do is I want to blend all the ones I'm going to keep. And I'm going to keep them all. It smells good. Got a nice corn smell to it. Mmm. Smells so good. All right. They, they all smell great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use all four of those. All right, let me get this stuff out of my way. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna blend all these together. I mean, I've tasted them all. Mm. I mean, they're all, they're all delicious. Woo, that one's hot. All right, and to me, I know some people do small cuts and they pick at the, the uh, ones that they want to make, and, that, and that's fine. Everybody does everything that they, the way they want to do it. But my theory is, you know, unless it tastes like pure crap, like I would be willing to bet that that is, you know, to me, visual, it ain't supposed to be cloudy. So I'm not gonna use that. So I'm gonna take that one out. But overall, my theory is, if it all tastes pretty good, it's kind of like when you make a cake. Uh, you don't, you blend everything together and then you get a great taste of a cake. This is, to me, this is the same way. Okay, I like everything. There's nothing sticking out that's, nah. I blend it all together and you're gonna have one fantastic drink. That's just me. Everybody, like I said, everybody does it a little bit different and that is great. So, I want to mix all these together. Whoop. And probably where I messed up with this is I should have moved down to smaller cuts and I probably could have saved that much more of that to put in there. But that's okay. That's still good usable alcohol. I'll put it in the next product and uh, we'll get that alcohol out. Because all that is is alcohol with a little bit extra tails. This tails is a, uh, it's more water than it is alcohol and, you, and, and the oils and stuff and that's why it clouds up. Okay, so look at that. All right, so we got that. I want to see what our starting proof is. Now, here's the other theory is a lot of people want to put, well, we'll get to that. All right, our proof is right there. Woo! <laughs> uh, damn, that's a little high. A hundred, well, it's 70, around 78 percent wow that's hot all right so what I will do 
I gotta put some water with it. I don't think three bottles is gonna be enough. Stay there. All right, I'm gonna put two bottles in here and then I'm gonna mix it up. Now, any good water that you can um, use to dilute fine. Now, there is some people say, well, you gotta add that, the alcohol to the water. And some say you gotta add the, the water to the alcohol. If there's not tails in this, I've never had a problem. Now, you'll see it look a little cloudy right now, and that's because of the air bubbles that I'm putting into it. But you'll see, them air bubbles will uh, leave pretty fast. All right, let's see where we're at now. Uh, right now, we are at... Whew, 55 percent yeah. I want to this I like my whiskey around 80 proof that's what I like so I think we can go Let's see what we got now. All right, I am looking at, that's 45. Hmm. Should I get one more? 45. That'd be 90 proof. I think so. Let me go get one more bottle and I'll be right back. All right. And I know that there's, I'm gonna put that half a bottle. I know there's calculators and stuff online to do this, and I've said that before. This, to me, this is just as easy as the way. All right, let's see what we got now. And now we are at 43. All right. All right. Last time it is dead on forty. 40 A, uh, 40 ABV. I mean, 40%, which would be 80 proof. That's perfect, exactly where I would like it. All right, so let me just divide these jars up so they're kind of equal. Pretty close. Okay, so that is proofing and blending. Kind of give it a taste of the things will taste a whole lot different from once you proof it down. That's gonna be some good bourbon. Got a little bit of a sweet taste to it. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, we are on step 15. Can you believe it? We're there already. All right, step 15 is aging or oaking and aging. 
All right, there's a many different ways we can do this. You know, it's strictly up to you. Um, but I gotta, this is what I'm gonna do. So let's describe, okay, different ways that we could oak or age. All right, we have oak chips that we could put right into the distillate and let it go to town and it will give it that oak taste and the charred taste and the, and the right color and all that. So we, that's option one. Option two is we can use stays, uh, hunks of, of uh, oak, toasted. We can use that in the distillate. And it will do the same as chips, right? Now here's a couple other things we could do. Okay, I have a wooden mini barrel. We could put this in a wooden mini barrel, put it on the shelf and let it do its thing. All right, and it could be aged that way. And then our fourth option for this is, I got one of these uh, bad motivator barrels that they said to me to try it out. We could oak it or age it in that. Uh, and this would represent more of the big barrel. Okay, so anyway, that is our options. What I am asking of you is down in the comments, give me your vote on which how should we age this smoky corn bourbon. And by the way, what I've tasted out of that jar to, to do make, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's going to be great. No matter which one of these options I take, it's going to be pretty darn good. I know that for a fact. So, like I said, that's our four options. Chips, sticks, barrels, band motivator barrel. Please give me your vote. And then that's what we're going to do. And then we'll come back and do that. Um, Okay, I really appreciate it. All right. Okay, the last step is step 16, in which we're not gonna really see it done, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Step 16 is bottling. Well, once you, you figure that your desolate is aged in whatever you do, uh, and you feel like it's done, it's time to put it in a bottle. Uh, I collect bottles, I bought bottles, uh, yeah, like it's a bottle I bought. I bought these kind of bottles. They work great. I like the corks the best, but so you got you know your regular whiskey bottle. This is a bottle that it come from a local distillery, I, and I just like that square bottle. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I use cork jars. Um. Uh, now this is like a Jim Beam bottle with a twist lid. I've had good luck with them, reusing them. I just strip the labels off and reuse them. And then you got some other bottles that are unique looking with, you know, with corks. So I save all the corks and I got friends that save me bottles with corks. That is my most favorite. Um, and so you can use bottles of everything which way. Now one thing we started doing is my wife been making me labels for my bottles to show off. Uh, this one here is uh, my apple rye whiskey and she named it apple of your rye whiskey. <laughs> I thought that was pretty fun. Put a nice little picture on there and some other ones she put some information on the back. Labels are cheap. Uh, yeah, it's just something. Hey, I showed that off a little bit sitting on a home bar and it's, it works out pretty good. You know, you put a lot of work into it, you might as well show it off, right? So, all right. I hope you enjoyed this series. It's been a lot of fun to me. I get a lot of nice, good product to enjoy. So, um, hey, like I said before, give me your vote how you want me to age this. Just put it in the, in the end there and in the just, you know, comments. And then we'll come back and we'll do that part. All right? So, I guess the last thing I got to say is, hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time here on Still Works in Bruin. Cheers.